We'd like to welcome you all to our Palm Sunday, Passion Sunday celebration. And again, we're offering this uh, celebration for all our communities, all our people, for you and your homes everywhere and your families. I just want to mention that nobody is obliged to get palms this weekend that uh, there'll be palms that are blessed today that will be available for you later on when the restrictions are lifted. But the churches will be open a little bit this Palm Sunday uh, for those who really want to get their palms. And so we begin this celebration. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal mystery, that is to say, his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry to the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. And we have a blessing of the palms, and the priests extend their hands as well. Let us pray. Niyotsuna Kitsamanato, Almighty God, Sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And the holy water being used is pre-COVID virus. Increase the faith of those who place their hope in you, O God, and graciously hear the prayers of those who call on you, that we who today hold high these branches to hail Christ in his triumph may bear fruit for you by good works accomplished in him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey died and a cold with us, untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say to this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, tell the daughters of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the fall of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, and put their clothes on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their clothes on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, That is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. 
the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, like the crowds who acclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, with the palms let us go forth in peace. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, Kitsamanato, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior Jesus to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And we now have our first reading for this Passion Sunday. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The servant of the Lord said, The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I hit, did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. My God, God, my God, God why, why have you forsaken me? For dogs are all around me. A company of evildoers encircles me. My hands and feet have shriveled. I count all my bones. My, my God, God, my God, God why, why have you forsaken me? They divide my clothes amongst themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far away. O oh, my help, come quickly to my aid. My Lord, my God, why have you forsaken me? I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippines. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God highly exalted him and gave him the name, of, name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth 
and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. We'll be doing the shortened version of the Passion account today. For the longer version, you can refer to your missal uh, from your Sunday readings. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But Jesus gave them no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you? Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Christ. For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him. Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Christ? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answer, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put the charge against him which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two thieves were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, saying, shaking their heads. You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. 
He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The thieves who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabatani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Then some of the bystanders heard it and they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine and put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. I now invite you to pause your video and to take a moment to go to your crucifix uh, in your house or to your holy corner and there if you're able to kneel to pray for a minute before the crucifix. Again, thinking of what Jesus' death for you means and how strong his love is for us. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were open, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly this man was God's son. In that reading of the Passion, we have Jesus' last words, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which is Aramaic for, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I kind of wonder what my last words will be. I'm sure they won't be pretty profound. Probably something like, I didn't think the ice was that thin or something like that. But Jesus' last words are important because he's quoting from the beginning of Psalm 22. And our Psalms are great prayers of emotion where they show frustration, anger, sadness, joy, they allow us to express all our emotions to God. And so Jesus is able to do that when he prays that song. One of the things is that this reading has a real connection to a great story in our archdiocese. A few years ago, one of our new young priests had come from another country. And uh, so from the paw here, he was brought to Thompson. And then from Thompson all the way to Lynn Lake, and then on that crazy road, if you've ever been on it, between Lynn Lake to Kineseo or Co-op, the road turned so many times. They finally made it there, and then they had about a three-hour boat ride. A boat ride can be pretty nice on a nice day, but we know when the weather's bad, a boat ride is no fun. And so for those hours, they crashed up and down, bang, bang, and rain, they got wet. And it was just a rough, rough trip. When they were just a few kilometers outside of Broche, the motor broke. And now the boat was just in the waves and the rain. They were trying to fix it and it looked like they were stuck. So this young priest stood up and went, 
Eli, Eli, lama sabatani. He too was having one of those days where he was saying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? We all have those days sometimes. And I think it's good that we can be honest in our prayer to God. Just pour out how you're really feeling. Let God know what's really going on in your heart. I think just to allow that honesty to be with him. And then try to hear what God says back to you. I've got a little link uh, by where our video is to a song by Stephen Bell. He's a singer from Winnipeg. And the song is called He Will Know. And it's a very comforting song to me. The lyrics go, When your heart is in despair, When you feel beyond repair, He will know. When your day is filled with tears, when your night is filled with fear, he will know. To know that because of what we're celebrating today, Jesus accepting torture, the mocking, the crucifixion, and death for us. He's not just going to sit there when we pour out our hearts to him. We need that honest prayer. Another thing in this time is, I think because we're all under certain stresses uh, in this COVID virus time, that we recognize our weakness even more. None of us is as strong as we would like to be. In many ways, I think this Lent has been a Lent for the whole world. One of my favorite lines is, this is the Lentiest Lent I have ever Lented that it's caused a lot of sacrifice, uh, a lot of letting go in this Lent for the world. We feel it. And then we turn sometimes to our weakness to try to handle the anxiety. One fellow he was telling me, he says, I uh, bought booze for two weeks and I drank it in two days. And I think all of us experience just how weak we are in this stress. Be patient with yourself, honest with God, and keep trying. God will give you energy again to try again. Another part that's important in this time is that we notice others. In the same way we're finding it difficult to cope with the different things going on, so are the people we live with and the people that are around us also finding it difficult. I've had many, many Zoom meetings and conference calls. And in one of those calls, we started by just inviting everybody to share what is something that they're especially frustrated with or fearing at this time. I found that very helpful because not only do we give what we're thinking, but we also hear what others are going through. And we don't feel like we're handling it alone anymore. That we're all trying together and all finding it challenging. So I just invite you to make that extra effort to notice people around you. That line in the gospel that Father Gila read at the beginning of our service, I find so hopeful. The line says, See, look, your king is coming to you, humbly, riding a donkey. That that's the message I think God is offering us in this holy week. Look, your king is coming to you. God is coming to each of us. To know that, to have confidence in it, to receive it. That priest that had made that journey to Brochet, I remember about a couple years later, I was moving him from that community and he didn't want to leave. I'm sure he had some tough days, especially at the beginning, but then he grew to be blessed by being in Brochet. I am sure there are some difficult days ahead for us, but Christ our King is coming to us and it is going to be okay. So I invite you this Palm Sunday, be honest in your prayer to God. Some days you'll need to say, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
Make a special effort to notice others and to truly know your King is coming to you. He will be with us in these days ahead. And now we profess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in your love for us, your, your dying for us, we bring to you our prayers of the faithful. For the church, community of crucified Christ, manifesting solidarity with the poor and oppressed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of people and nations struggling to implement policies that promote development, justice, and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those whom we, as a church or a society, have rejected, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For us, God's people, striving to see the world through the eyes of the crucified Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all our communities who are affected by COVID virus, uh, for all our sick, uh, all our elders. We just lift them up to you, Lord, for wisdom in our leadership, for patience in this time, and for protection from all that can harm us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. And for any of your other uh, prayers of the faithful. We pray for humility, the simplicity in our life, so that God may help us to recognize Jesus as the Savior. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Pray in a special way for our elders, who many of whom are isolated from from their families and their friends. So we ask you, Lord, to send them consolation and a deep peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Kitsimanato niotsine, loving God, help us to be honest in our prayer to you. Help us to have deep trust that our Lord is coming to us these days. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, accept the sacrifice of our hands. 
for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, Jesus our Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right right and and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For though innocent, Jesus suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, Kitsumanato, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, with Mary Shechen, our Bishop, and with all the ministers of your gospel. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Half most on us all we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
And we now pray for that confidence that our Lord is coming near to us in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await with blessed hope the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us share Christ's peace with one another. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I now invite you in your home to make a spiritual communion. There'll be a prayer for you to pray on the screen.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred misgifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, Jesus, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we thank you for joining and praying with us again this Palm Sunday. We'll have services as well for Holy Thursday, Good Friday, the Easter Vigil, and Easter Sunday. And we pray for all our world again at this time, but especially for all you brothers and sisters in Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go and proclaim the gospel by our lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Thank you again for joining us from your homes. Uh, in these days, we just won't be able to be at church together, but we are together as church from our homes and wherever you can pray. And so I just encourage you again to try not to give into the spirit of panic. Try not to watch too much news. We only need the, the basic details, but to count our blessings still, to be patient with yourself and with the people that you're living with. And to know that we're here for you as well. We're praying for you. You can also call us at the office. Christine and Jim's and Father Jim Fiore, Father Guilain, that we are available if you need to talk. So blessings on you all. May God's peace reign in our hearts. <laughs>